any given week, I give or attend over a dozen presentations, and these range from large audiences to small groups of business people. And most of us have endured the bad presentation. Some of us are actually guilty of giving them ourselves. And there are some great books out there on how to improve your presentation, your slides, but I wanted to give you some tips on how to improve you, the presenter, and your frame of mind. So here's my top 10 rules. It's your privilege, not theirs. You're the one honored to be speaking, and you should consider it as such. You're at their service. They're investors of their time. I know you may have traveled miles in coach or whatever to get to the speaking engagement, but they're investing their precious time to listen to you. Time is one non-renewable resource, so look at your audience. Think of what they could be doing instead of listening to you. Make it worth their while. Remember, have you ever been in a presentation and found yourself looking around for the back door or wondering if anyone will notice if you leave? Don't let that happen to your audience. And it's not about you or whatever you're selling. It's about them. Whatever you have to say, it's got to be of value to your audience. If you can't position what you're pitching to have them see the usefulness, then you're wasting your time and theirs. Which brings me to the point of, so what? In your presentation or demonstration, think about each topic you spend any time covering. Imagine that after you cover it, someone stands up and asks, so what? If you can't answer that question, don't take the time sharing or showing. And try to get past the facts and actually get them to relive and feel something. To have someone believe what you believe, you need to reach them on an emotional level. I evangelize the use of social tools in businesses, and I'll often ask my audience, do you remember the first day on the job? If you were like me, you were shown around the office and introduced to all your coworkers, and then your boss showed you your desk, and you were told, if you have any questions, just ask, and then he or she left the room. Remember how your head almost exploded with questions? Remember the first assignment you got and you had no idea who might be able to help you or where to look for an answer? And then I tell them how our solution helps them find the experts and how social communities take you to leaders and people who have answers. And I'll ask, what do you feel when I say the word email? And most people will respond with, I'm overwhelmed or over quota or trapped. And then I tell them about how using social tools can actually free them from email. I'll share how liberating and powerful it is to have conversations outside the context of the inbox. And note that when comparing emotional states, be sure to use your body language and your tone. When you speak of the past, of uh, some way of doing things, lower your countenance a bit. Change the tone of your voice to more melancholy as if you were telling someone about some bad accident. And then when you come to the solution, visually and audibly change to a more upbeat and positive tone as if you were telling someone about you know, winning the lottery. And please, stop talking before they stop listening. This one needs no explanation. And like bullets, use questions appropriately. Bullet points are called that for a reason. Too many can shoot you down. And questions can actually be the same. When you want to get your audience involved, Think beforehand about the questions you might ask. I've seen presenters ask for a show of hands on some topic and then didn't use that information in their next point. If it was important enough for them to answer, then use their response. And also, don't ask questions in a way that seems condescending, like, how many of you don't know what a tweet is? In that case, you're the tweet. If you need to know that kind of information, which actually can be very helpful in getting to know your crowd, you might ask, how many of you have heard of Twitter? Any of you consider yourself frequent users of Twitter? This kind of question gives almost everyone a chance to raise their hand on the first question, and then they can kind of lower it quietly if needed on the second question. After all, you're only indicating they're not a frequent user, not that they've never used it. And one last thing on questions. Control and use questions wisely from the audience. Consider the entire audience. Don't let any single person or topic steal the show. And on the topic, know your audience. Early conversations. Pick out someone and connect with them. I really like to get to sessions early. Set up quickly and then work the room. Ask a few people about the conference or the city or their job. If you find someone interesting or you talk to someone about a relative topic, use that in your presentation by saying, you know, just prior to coming up front, we were having this conversation about, 
It makes you personal and approachable, someone with whom they can have a conversation. Don't just waltz in the room. Go to the front. Act remote. Uh, hang around with your friends or sponsors. While you're getting to know the crowd, you might find someone from a company or with a job that you find interesting. And then in your presentation, use them as an example. Now, I was talking with Bob, who works in a manufacturing company. He was telling me that they have delays in getting information to their distributors. Well, here's where social can help them by. And the ninth point, it's, it's a learning experience. But it's a learning experience for you. So spend time with your audience, before and after. Beforehand, ask them why they came to the event. Ask them what they hope to take away. And be prepared to at least try to work in some of their expectations. And after it's over, if possible, talk to your audience. Maybe the same people you connected with before the session. Ask them, did I hit the target? Ask them if there were anything that they were surprised at. Anything that stuck with them. An aha moment. I've actually been very surprised at how little things are memorable moments. If you're really interested in improving, ask about what they thought could be improved. What should we do next time to make it better? And thank them. Thank them for attending, for giving you some feedback. Then take what you learned from one audience and adapt it to your next audience. Go out. Get better. And some may, may take offense to this last point, but if you and your audience aren't enjoying this, maybe you should consider doing something else. It's said that most people fear public speaking more than they fear death. If you're one who doesn't like public speaking, you're not alone. It's not for everyone. However, if you want to be a good public speaker and you're having difficulty, you can practice, you can learn, and you can improve on your speaking skills. But if you struggle and have no desire to work at getting better, please find someone else to fill your speaking slots. I hope at least one of these points will help you. And if you have other points you've found or if you have comments on what you've heard here, please let me know. If the site where this is posted offers a comment section, please use it so others can benefit from your wisdom. And if you'd like to reach me directly, here's my email address. I'd love to hear from you because we can all learn something new.